everybody. Ty Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Hopefully this video gets up because, sheesh, my computer is not acting all that well. I just ha had a recent update and for whatever reason now we're having problems. But in any case, D-Day is arriving here. We're within that 24-hour period before Milton makes landfall as a major hurricane here. So in the 5 o'clock advisory, we still have a Category 5 storm here with 160 mile per hour winds. The movement speed has increased and also there's been a change in direction. We're now moving to the northeast at 14 miles an hour. And last time we looked, we had a central low pressure of 905 millibars. As you can see on the satellite here, there is an eye wall replacement cycle going on. So this is going to weaken, but how quickly this may occur here is going to be defining as to what we end up getting by the time landfall occurs here. There's been a slight jog back to the north as well. So Tampa Bay is still squarely in the sights of this storm here. Also, anyone over towards Sarasota, Clearwater, et cetera, you guys need to be watchful as well. But a lot of impacts still expected here. Tropical storm force winds have not arrived just yet. Those won't be arriving until this afternoon. Right at about 2 to 3 p.m. is when I would expect those to start to arrive in our areas of interest. From that point and beyond, conditions will only deteriorate from here. So if this is the last, and I mean absolute last chance to evacuate. So wind speed probabilities at this current point in time. The wind field from the storm is not very large. Only about 100 miles extension of tropical storm force winds and maybe about 40 or 50 miles of hurricane force winds. This is not a huge storm if you look at it on satellite here. But still fact in the matter is probability of us seeing those tropical storm force winds are very high across the central part of the peninsula here. And now even the uh, hurricane force wind probabilities are starting to increase a bit here. Of course, they're going to be highest over towards in just south of the Tampa Bay area here. And then as we go further along here, the probabilities drop off. I do think through the next advisories, these will start to increase over towards the central part of the peninsula. We're still expecting a hurricane to make landfall and go through the peninsula as a hurricane after but 15 knot winds here these are basically severe thunderstorm-esque winds here probabilities are of course very high over towards the central part of the peninsula but even extends pretty far to the north here too so orlando you're in that as well so power is likely to go out for a lot of people in these areas that are within the yellow and the orange here in particular we're on later tonight we'll have of course the power outage map just the pretty much the whole shebang here at this point. So of course, looking at Milton spaghetti models here, nothing really to talk about. We already know the deal here at this point. There's still a bit of variability as to what we could end up seeing as far as a storm, a uh, storm's intensity here. Some of these are still wanting to keep this at cat five. There's a few of these that are gonna keep it at cat four, a few keeping it at cat three here. So really questionable as to what we could end up seeing here still. Storm still looks really impressive on satellite here. But by the time we expect landfall here, they've upped it now to a category four at 130 miles an hour here. There is some wind shear that's expected that's going to slow this storm down here. And you can look on both screens here. We have, we're gonna try to sneak this other model here in the top left corner but basically this is the hwrf parent that we're looking at along with the hafs a and the b model runs here so what we have going on at this current point in time is we have our storm coming in to make landfall and we actually see this dropping down all the way to or drop or raising excuse me up to a 945 millibar storm here and before weakening after it goes across land of course here Big catalyst, catalyst behind that is going to be, of course, wind shear and that eye wall replacement cycle. You can see the eye closing up here on infrared satellite. But this wind shear to the north should help keep it weaker. But considering the fact that this is a Category 5 and it's already had that experience in its DNA, these storms do have DNA, by the way. They, uh, There is a chance that this could resist it as it's coming into landfall and could strengthen. So... Like I said, the forecast is very much variable at this point in time. But both models here, HAFSA and B, along with the HWRF, are showing a weaker storm, of course, by landfall. Still a Category 3 or 4, which is a major hurricane at this point. So hazards have not changed, unfortunately. 
as far as storm surge inundation goes we talked about this last night with the discussion we still have areas further to the south now that are showing potential for catastrophic storm surge this is over towards port charlotte here i'm not sure why they've stopped including tampa with the higher surge here maybe because of the recent jog to the south a little bit but i'm not sure i'm willing to go along with that just yet that would be a great case if that isn't for them but if not if this goes wrong that could just put more people at risk but like i said a lot of things are still variable with this As these storms get closer and closer to landfall they tend to wobble a lot more so I'm kind of on a hair trigger with that but in any case though port charlotte looks like the point of interest now another very susceptible area here but there are also a lot of wetlands that are going to be catching most of the storm surge the city itself and a lot of the population is going to get much uh, lower inundation. It's not going to be nine foot inundation like what we're seeing here in the red. But still, that being said, storm surge warnings are still very much in effect here. This map also was glitching last night. I wonder if it still may be. But in any case, though, the Tampa Bay is still expecting 10 to 15 feet, which I'm kind of confused as to why the storm surge inundation map isn't quite working correctly. But over towards Charlotte Harbor, we're still expecting up to 12 feet. In the areas in the red here, we can expect 8 to 12 feet, 5 to 8 feet in the orange, 3 to 5 feet over here for Chokoloski to Flamingo here. The Florida Keys are expecting about 1 to 3 feet all the way up to the uh, Cardstown Bridge. Uh, Palm Beach, uh, Sebastian Inlet is 1 to 3 feet. Then, all, then from there, all the way up to Edisto Beach in South Carolina, 2 to 4 feet storm surge. Indian Pass over here towards Yankee Town is one to three. Then, of course, in reverse here, we're starting to see the increases from Yankee Town to Arapica and the Anticlot River, all the way up into our points of it, our uh, greatest air point of impact here, Anticlot River, all the way over towards Egmont Keys, up to nine to thirteen feet. So, storm surge is going to be a big problem. Of course, as we know, rainfall is going to be a big issue as well. The high risk has remained. It has slightly grown just a little bit since we last looked at it. We can anticipate the uh, rain to only intensify, of course, as we go throughout the day today. Then last but not least, we'll go ahead and take a look at both the rainfall potential as well as the tornado threat here. The heaviest rain where we're getting 20 inches, thankfully, looks like it's trying to stay offshore. But I'm still going to be watching that. I do think that some areas over here, it could be variable. But in any case, though, 12 to 16 inches, definitely possible in this little strip of red here. 8 to 12 inches in the uh, orange. And within the green area, we could be looking at maybe 6 to 8 inches as well. Locally higher totals are very much possible, though. Also, go ahead and take a quick look at model comparisons here. As you can see, we have the HRRR with this little narrow strip where we're up to about 10 inches to a foot of rain here. Just offshore here, we could easily get 8 to 10, some places still getting 12 before the day is out here. But all the models here are pretty much in good agreement with this. Not really a surprise to be, be uh, had here. Uh, whether it's experimental models even at this point, it's a very good model agreement here. So. Flash flooding is going to be a big issue, and of course, as we talked about in the stream yesterday, here are some of the rivers that we are concerned about getting into major flood stage here in the purplish uh, magenta color. <clears throat> but as you can see, some of these areas still haven't quite recovered from Helene here. Some of these areas are still at minor or even moderate flood stage at this point. So definitely uh, concerned in regards to the impacts that we're going to be seeing here throughout the course of the next 36 hours. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and talk about that tornado threat here. So this is our point of interest right here. So used to looking at the planes when I see enhanced risk, but anywhere over towards Melbourne, Cape Coral, Palm Bay, Kissimmee and Fort Myers, you guys are in that enhanced risk now and uniquely, and you don't see this often, with hurricanes, the fact that we have an enhanced risk with a hatched 10% area. So the threat of a significant tornado is very real. Talked about this yesterday during the live stream. The uh, environment a little bit later this afternoon is actually very impressive, especially with the amount of instability that we have available here. 
This kind of reminds me a bit of what we had with Barrel, considering the fact that we had so much instability. About 3,000 joules per kilogram of cape, more than sufficient enough to support Tornado Genesis and then some. 3,000 is actually considered an explosive environment. So, the fact that we have that before the uh, main part of the hurricane arrives, especially towards South Florida, is a big concern to me. We're not going to really go over the skew tees. I don't have too much time before I have to head out to work. But if we combine the surface cape with this bolt shear that we have here at the surface to one kilometer range. So this is pretty much right around where that low level jet would be. These areas in the uh, yellow here are getting towards 55 knots towards the sur surface winds here. So with that being said, very much a prime environment for tornadoes here. So big concerns there. <coughs> There's even a pretty notable significant tornado parameters here. Now, last time I looked at this is last night. So the brighter the colors, of course, the higher the uh, significant tornado threat here. And as you can see, we're getting into those purples. So we're getting into the fives, even getting some pinks in there. So we're getting up to 5.5 even on some of these numbers. So very much a concern before the night is out that we will see at least a few tornadoes, some of which could indeed be strong here. The greatest threat for tropical supercells is really going to be more so during the late morning, early afternoon hours here. You can see this whole this whole squall of uh, storms here. These have supercell characteristics based off what I'm seeing here. So depending on how the convection flows, could determine whether or not we even get a tornado outbreak with this to go along with it, which will be the last thing that we would need, truthfully. Of course, as the storm closes in, a lot of that instability will be used up, so the tornado threat will decrease by the time we get to landfall. Not to say that we can't get tornadoes, but it will be a little bit, the chances will be a little bit lower. But in any case, though, I hope you guys stay safe. I will be back later this afternoon. We might do another discussion. We may just go live late this evening to cover the event with that being said you guys stay safe if you're in florida or really just in general regardless of where you are but especially if you're in florida make sure you're staying safe make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that share button and also make sure especially hit that share button especially if you know some people that are going to unfortunately be riding out the storm in florida i know circumstances come into play here but that being said make sure that they're prepared you stay prepared as well and i'll see you later today Take care.